Hello, oh, welcome everyone. Hi. Welcome to our conf. My name is Stefan. Um, I'm with Fossil Foundation. I'm also a professor at this university. Um, so I'm here with two roles today. I want to get you um, to the um, history of Fossil Foundation of the event and give you all the information that you need for the next two days. Three days, actually. There's um, some more on Friday, uh, on Sunday. I think you already got all the emails. Um, I think you're well aware of the whole schedule. Um, so it's a two-day conference. We have two days of special sessions. One was yesterday uh, by Cadence. I heard it was a great success, Anton. Yes. <laughs> um, it seems everyone's really happy seeing Skywater in action with commercial tools, too. Uh, we have more special sessions on Sunday in the morning between 9 and 1. Um, we have a tiny tape out workshop, we have a CocoDB unconference, and a Fusoc plug fest, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. You have to get there to find out. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of great talks. We don't have a lot lightning talks. We have three lightning talks. Please consider submitting your own lightning talk. I think it's a great opportunity to showcase your project. Just give, like, create one slide or just show a website or whatever for two or three minutes to show what you're currently working on, maybe what you want to work on, what you wanted to work on for a long time, something like this. Everything is welcome. Just register it with the um, uh, with the form that's still on the website, and um, then we will have it tomorrow in the afternoon, uh, just a session of the lightning talks. I think it's really great to have more than three lightning talks, otherwise they are not too lightning-y. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a great chance. We had the last Orconf in 2019. We wanted to do one uh, last year, but we skipped it. We came back this year. I think it's really great to have everyone back together. I see a lot of new faces, but I also see a similar amount of faces that I saw for the last years already before the pandemic. Um, first things to note is some more. The most important thing is the code of conduct that everyone who registered accepted. Um, you can find it on the website. Reach out if you have any questions um, about conduct and any issues. The other one is Wi-Fi. If you're an academic from Europe, you probably have Idurome, then you're already the network. If you are not, there's an open network called Bayern WLAN, which is Bavaria Wi-Fi. And English. Um, it's free for everyone. You can just connect um, by accepting the condition. There's a captive portal once you connect it. Um, and there's a button called Verbinden, which is German for connect. You can change the language too, but it's pretty straightforward, I think. There's a chat. I think we all invited you during the uh, registration process already. Um, it's a matrix chat. You can use elements or whatever just do it in the browser. Um, it's a good way to quickly connect with other folks at a conference. Uh, maybe get a contact of someone who gave a presentation or just ask questions and mingle and also after the conference we will keep it up so that you could still connect. I will keep it up for a few minutes, seconds, not minutes. <laughs> Otherwise we should probably put it on the website. Um, that's maybe the easiest to, um, I will take care during the first presentation that it's also on the website. I see some cameras, I will wait for a few seconds. Okay, great. So, just a few things about FOSSI Foundation. FOSSI stands for Free and Open Source Silicon. Um, so it's the silicon equivalent of FOSS, FOSS. Um, so we have a manifesto. So the idea is that we promote and protect the open source silicon chip movement. We, the founders of FOSSI Foundation, we originated from the um, open risk and open course communities. And we were not really happy with how the communities worked around 2013, 2014, and then decided to form the Free and Open Source Silicon Foundation as a steward for the entire community, which was mainly the folks involved in open risk at the time. A lot of uh, stuff happened after then, most importantly, Risk 5, probably, which brought many new people into the community. And uh, we are very happy that uh, we see this great influx of very great minded people. Um, our main things are not running projects, it's more running everything that projects need to be successful. Um, we run events like Orcon, we do educational programs. Um, for example, we participate in Google Summer of Code as an umbrella organization where you can participate with your project and then you can um, try to find students that work to, with you throughout the summer and uh, they get a stipend by Google for working on your project, and we are just the umbrella organization that helps with the organizational stuff to get the money out of Google into the pockets of your students. Um, and we have some working groups. We ha spend 
several years on the topic licenses, which we consider solved nowadays. Um, if you have any questions about licensing, Julius is very happy to help you, who led this licensing committee. We work together with Andrew Katz and others at CERN, for example, to work on the CERN OHL and um, SolderPad, which are the licenses that we consider the most important. Yes, so we support you whenever you want to start something larger, if you have a project. Um, we also um, help projects that don't make any progress anymore. We have Wishbone on our stewardship, we have CocoDB on our stewardship, for example. So those are projects where the maintainers couldn't maintain it anymore and we just took it under the umbrella and searched for new people, for new collaborators to keep the project going. Yeah, if there's a situation that you mind, may find yourself in, we're very happy to assist you. We are a not-for-profit organization registered in the United Kingdom, which was a very clever choice in 2014 and a very stupid choice in 2023, to be honest. Um, but this is how it is. Um, we have an asset lock, so we, don't, we are not allowed to transfer any assets out of the UK and our beneficiary, in case we wind up, is the Low Risk uh, Foundation, yeah, which is also is the same organization as we are. That's the main activities. We have community building, this stuff like today. Um, we had online events, etc. Um, we help projects um, be innovative. We are guardians if you have anything that needs to be under a good legal framework that we can provide to you if you need it. And yeah, we provide resources if you need them. How did we get there? Um, so we had Julius and Olaf meeting in 2011, I think, because you worked at Open Course, right? So. It's not really a conference if you meet, but you had a drink, obviously, in <laughs> 2011, uh, which is considered like the idea where I think you were pretty unhappy. Maybe you can talk, a, say a few words about how you got into this. Olaf? You can use your mic, too, that you give you. That's okay. Um, so they, too, they started essentially, they worked at OpenCourse, at the company that controlled OpenCourse at the time and were not really happy with the way that they treated open risk and the entire community. Um, so we had another meeting, which was then the open risk conference, which was everyone working on open risk, um, also meeting in Stockholm, and there were 20 people from the community at the time that met there, and this was the first org conf actually in 2012. And in 2013, uh, we had five more people into open risk. <laughs> that was the entire open risk community meeting in Cambridge. Um, it was the first time that we saw presentations from Davide, for example, who will be here tomorrow at the 10th anniversary of the Pulp team. It was the first time the Pulp project was presented, and we saw a lot of traction at the time and then decided to, to, to have it more sustainable, and this was the first time I think we discussed forming a foundation um, as a legal framework for that. Um, and the first, I think, larger attended and more perceived um, conference was 2014, also in Munich at Technical University where I worked at this time at my PhD. Um, we had another edition then and we, I think this was the time we knew this was a thing going on and there were some people from Berkeley that registered like two weeks before the conference and said, oh, we want to present this stuff that we've been working on for some years and it was Risk Five, and we were very mad <laughs> because we had open risk and they came up with the new stuff and um, then we got to the next stage of acceptance, and now we are great risk five friends, everyone. Um, so it was really great, we had 40 people. Um, so you could see it was really like getting somewhere, we were sure that what we were doing makes sense. Open source silicon is something that we can work on. We had people from Lettuce at the time presenting the um, Lettuce open source microcontroller, for example. Um, you saw also start um, working on, I think Yosef was presented there for the first time in the community. I think there's a lot of stuff that you could see popping up and see this is going somewhere. And this was 2015. <laughs> so we saw it's really going somewhere now with Risk 5. Risk 5 brought a lot of more people. And we had, I think the first day was only Risk 5 processors. It was like one Risk 5 soft core after the other. <laughs> like, oh, I created this 32 bit in Bluespec. I created 32 bit in. System Verilog, and I invented a new language called Chisel and also presented, and that was really fun, and I think we had 120, 125 people, and it was really, I think, the time that um, we also needed to form legally, and this is what we did in 2015. We signed uh, all the paperwork at the conference to have the incorporation of the um, community interest company in the UK. That was 2016 in Bologna then, at the team of, um, of Luca. Um, and I think starting that time, we were always around 100, 120 people uh, that we had here. This time we have registered the most numbers, um, 150. Uh, we will see how many will show up. 
2017, you can see up there was Hepton Bridge, um, somewhere north in the UK, but very cozy, nice little town uh, where Andrew Beck organizes Wuthering Bites and the week after we had all come. It's really great, and we were in Gdansk, in Poland, and Bordeaux in 2019, and this was unfortunately the last time we had Orconf 2020, we had to cancel Munich, which was supposed to be in this lecture hall, so we are coming back a few years later. Um, we also created some spin-offs, we had this speak of open source hardware, which we only had once in conjunction with the RISC-V workshop. Um, during the pandemic, we had Fossi dial-up, some of you might remember, where I think the biggest impact was the first season where we had um, uh, Tim Ansel presenting the Skywater PDK work that he has done and the whole truth flow around it. And I think it's the most, most watched YouTube video that we have on our channel and that put us into the partner programs. Um, and we had a lot of people coming from the US and this was always the biggest struggle for us because the same as for Europeans, you, as a hobbyist, you don't go to the US for a hobbyist conference quite often, right? And we had many people from the US complaining, oh, our conference is so great, but why isn't it in the US sometimes? So we created a up as a companion conference in spring. We have our conference autumn and we had Portland in 2019. Then we had a pandemic and we had Santa Barbara this year in Up, and we think we are planning next year at MIT, um, also in springtime, I think April, May, middle. I, I forgot to tell you about it. <laughs> Um, so, call for actions. There's a few things. Become involved, most important. There's a lot of great projects that you will see over the next two days. Um, it's your chance to get involved and meet people that work on those projects, maybe bring in your own ideas, um, maybe become involved in the projects yourself, start a new project, get some food for thought. I think um, I find always the, the weekend of Orkham very inspiring. You can also become a member of Fossi Foundation. We didn't advertise it too heavily historically, but um, we want to get more members. We already have a membership of 50-ish people that we directly approached, uh, which we felt were very important as a um, steering committee for us, but we are open to member applications all the time. Um, there's some current activities that we're just working on at the moment, and I just highlighted two that I got involved with um, recently. So for a longer time, we've worked together with OSHWA, the Open Source Hardware Association, they have this open source hardware checkmark certification program, which is a self-certification for open source hardware projects, which mainly is tangible hardware, right? The PCB, Raspberry Pi style stuff. Um, we also want to have, together with them, a silicon IP certification mark, and we are working on some extra language that you need to add because the language for open source hardware that is tangible is different than for open source silicon. So we want to create like checklists, what you need to do to self-certify your IP block to have a certified block, which is not functional certification. It's more like, do you have your readme in place? Do you have a test bench in place? Do you have everything for getting started? Do you have everything documented? Is there a proper license? all this stuff, right? This is self-certification. I think it's very valuable. If you want to get involved, just get in touch with me so we can get your input. And I think we will have a roll call for more input later. The other thing that just popped up recently in Germany, we have something called Sovereign Tech Fund, which is a special fund directed at open source projects that are important to German and European sovereignty and stability of ecosystems. And they fund OpenSSL, for example, a lot of other projects mainly software projects at the moment, and they got in touch about hardware and silicon projects. And uh, yeah, we had some discussions, I had some thoughts, and if you have any input on this topic, I know everyone needs funding. They are very focused on hobbyists, not on academia. In academia, we have a lot of funding opportunities at the moment with the SHIPS Act, but they will focus on hobbyist projects. So if you are a hobbyist, you have a project and you want to work on it for a year or two years to get it into a stable state or to reach certain goals, they can supply you with the um, necessary funding. Um, the funding is somewhere in the range of 50 to 200k, I think, per project. So that's it about Fossi Foundation. There's uh, maybe I will show you the folks that's Olaf, who's a member of Fossi Foundation on the board of directors. There's Julius, Julius Baxter. There's Philip, there's Simon at the camera, and did I forget anyone? Oh, there's Matt, sorry. Matt Van, many of you know. Um, if you have any questions, if you need any assistance, just approach one of us. If you need your water refilled for the coffee machine, somebody can help you. I think I showed many people now. Um, we need to get the water somewhere. Um, things to know, we will have like snacks later today. We will put up the water now soon. 
and other drinks uh, for during the day. We have coffee the uh, entire Friday and Saturday. We have a dinner today at a social event, um, which is, I think, a seated dinner. Uh, we will have typical Indian food from Germany. <laughs> um, yeah, we decided against the Oktoberfest option, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I think, a very good uh, dinner that we have today. Uh, it's not at this venue, it's somewhere else I will show you. And then tomorrow we have this special event uh, where we will have finger food. And the idea is it's just on the other side of this building, in the next building. Um, it's called Creative Hall. It's more like a networking space where we can just have some networking. I ask every one of you to bring hardware, to bring lightning talks that we can just have some mingling and everyone showing their projects, discussing their projects, getting more with each other. And this beer, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's, this Indian food and German beer. That's <laughs> um, okay, and Sunday, yeah, there's only leftovers, but we usually have a lot of uh, leftovers. So there's the locations, this is the lecture hall, the majority of stuff is here. The other one is the creative hall, which yeah, I will show you tomorrow then, it's very easy to get there. And then we have uh, the KHG, um, which is an um, organization associated um, uh, with, with the Technic University. Um, we will show you the p food path there. There's several options to get there. Um, it's like a 20-minute walk. It's quite easy, quite straightforward to get there. Um, it's like nearly at the central station, um, so you can get there very quickly, which is here in the evening to get home. Um, uh, with the public transport, you just take the tram that's on this side of the building on the street, the Haarstraße, and you just take it to um, Karlsplatz, and then from there you can walk. That's easiest, so it stops right here. This is the stop, and then you go up there, okay? Um, if you need any assistance, then with the tickets, etc., somebody can help you from the team. Yes, so the creative hall is just, as I said, on the other side, we will show you tomorrow. That's a two-minute walk. So, um, to be honest, we didn't, like, we are, we are from Munich, but we always forget when Oktoberfest is. Yeah, obviously, everyone now knows it's not in October. <laughs> it ends in October. It's like the first Sunday in October is the f uh, last day of Oktoberfest, usually, which means that it's like the last week-ish of September, the first of October, usually. So we did some misplanning and um, didn't see that the first Sunday in October is actually October 1st. And that means it's the last two weeks of September. This is why it starts this weekend. That's a rare exception, which also means it runs two days longer because the 3rd of October is public holiday, national holiday in Germany. Um, but it's not important information for you. It's just some knowledge about Oktoberfest. So we didn't plan anything specific for Oktoberfest because the most of us are not too much in Oktoberfest, to be honest. Um, you go there once and then usually not. Um, and when you're much younger, you go there. Um, so we're not planning anything. If you're staying on Sunday, you can go there. Tomorrow is the first day. You cannot expect to get any beer tomorrow if you haven't reserved last year. <laughs> um, there's some options to get beer, probably if the weather is good around there, but you shouldn't expect to get into any of those tents. I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of Oktoberfest. The half part of the Oktoberfest is like, um, uh, like Ferris wheels and uh, roller coasters and kit adventures, and the other half is beer drinking, and this is the part where it's more known for, I think. <laughs> so you can get a roller coaster ride, but you will not get into the beer drinking because it's like enclosed, like beer halls, which is a tent, but it's not really a tent, it's a building that looks like a tent. You can see it here, like this is one of the tents, and there's like 10 or 11 of them. Um, but like the first day is very crowded. It's very hard to get in there. You have to get up at six in the morning if you want to see it uh, spontaneously. So we hope you don't do this. We hope you come to our conference tomorrow. You can still go there in the evening, maybe get a roller coaster ride, and then you're done. Yes, Christian. Um, if you want to go to the Wiesen anyway, there is a so-called Eude Wiesen. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, so it's called, yeah, that's every second year, right? So it has the, um, it's called Eudewiesen, which is Bavarian, and I mispronounced it uh, for old Oktoberfest. So this looks like Oktoberfest originally was, which was more cozy, it's more family friendly. I think it's closed in the evenings, maybe, I don't know, no, it should be open. It, it's open, yeah. This might be a chance where you might, but not, I don't think tomorrow, but on Sunday you will definitely get in. 
it's the same place, just at the end. You just walk to the end of Oktoberfest, and there's a special separate area. You have to pay like a small entrance fee. Um, and there's like an old wooden carousel for kids, and it's much more cozy. They sell beer there, right? They, they sell beer, yeah. <laughs> they all sell beer, that's a given. Um, but it's like, it's not the, like, this, this part of Oktoberfest that I hate. So I usually go to the Old Division. <laughs> um, but if you want to get in one of those beer halls, su Sunday could be an option. Um, but you have to stand in long queues. It depends on the weather. If the weather is really good, they open the outside areas. And then you might get into the outside areas. This might be an option. Uh, but tomorrow evening, if you're going there after the social event, you will not find anything. They're closing at 10 anyways. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's very busy. First weekend is very busy. First day especially. They have the special ceremony at, uh, at noon. They will open the first barrel of beer. You are not allowed to drink until then. And then everyone drinks a lot. And um, I think they're shifting at 5. You can get in at 5 again, but everything is reserved on the first day. Um, yeah, but usually just you can walk over it, it's quite funny. Um, maybe some people go on Sunday, you can coordinate. Um, uh, I think it's, uh, when you're here, I think it makes sense to go there. Um, yeah, I usually don't go there. So you can find the schedule at orgconf.org, as always, you can see all the talks. Um, we asked the speakers, including me, I already over one, one minute, um, to stay on time um, because we don't have a very tight schedule, we really plan for a lot of breaks and we really like to keep the breaks because that's the main reason that most people are here, besides the excellent talks, but I think most people are really here to meet other people again, right? Um, if you want to moderate the session, just get in touch with us. If you want to help us running the mics, which Olaf does very badly usually, but if you want to see improvements in the quality of the runners, <laughs> you can volunteer. Um, we will record the videos. If you, are, as a speaker, don't want it recorded or you don't want it published, either of those, please tell us um, that we can make sure. We will upload them to YouTube pretty quickly this time and uh, make them available after the presentation conference. Thanks to our sponsors. We have five great sponsors. Um, we have people from each of the companies here. It's very great. Thank you very much. It's highly appreciated. This the sponsors and the professional ticket holders make the event free for everyone and still very worthwhile, I think. Um, I want to thank all the volunteers. I want to thank the ticket holders, um, which becomes a very important thing for us. You can buy this 400 euro ticket and reimburse it with your company, for example. Or if I go to an event, I buy it and reimburse it with my university. If there's something that your company does, usually um, you don't have to tell them that you could have attended for free. Like that's the scheme that we're running here. Um, so just consider it next time. Um, yeah, we want to thank the host, which is me and uh, KHG. Uh, we have a video team, which is mainly Simon, and I and Matthias built everything to all. There's Matthias Rupp, too. He's uh, from my local team, a PhD student. There's Johannes, who also joined later. The organizing team, I want to thank. Oh, I forgot Peter before. There's Peter. Yes, sorry. Peter's also director. Peter from Antmicro, also a great sponsor. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thanks to the speakers, and thanks to all of you for showing up again, making this a great conference, and let's get started. Thank you very much. Sorry? Yes, I will do this now. Yes, I will intro first. Oh, you can intro.